Who's Louis Vittoria and why does KZ Chiefs want him? Well, we'll talk about him and his career and look closely at the things that you might not know about this coach. First of all, he's a 56-year-old Portuguese coach who prefers to play with the Fortnite system, which we'll talk about later on in the video. Starting with his career back in 2010, because that's when things got a bit interesting when he was coaching Ipacos de Ferreira. And one of the things that he did, which was significant with the size of the team, is the fact that he was able to reach the final of the League Cup and he lost to Benfica. Remember that, losing to Benfica in 2010, because it's going to become a bit relevant later on. 2011, he goes to Vitoria de Gumaresh, Portuguese words. And when he gets there, he wins a Portuguese Cup in 2012. And when he wins this Portuguese Cup, he wins it against Benfica. Pow, pow, pow. Revenge, revenge, revenge. And then the following year, he plays the Super Cup and then he loses to Porto by Trenil, but he has a cup with a very small team. He then moves on to Ipenfica in 2015-2016 because Benfica was like, okay, this guy, we played finals with him, he beats us in the finals, maybe he can come to our team and do something. So they get him on and he comes in. And in his first year, he actually starts by losing the Super Cup against Sporting. And if it were Kaiser Chiefs fans, they're like, ah, why are you losing this? Basically, Benfica and Sporting is equivalent to what Chiefs and Pirates are in South Africa. So they are big rivals. So yeah, it was a big deal. But it continued because in his, in his uh, first season, he wins the league, right? On top of that, he goes on to the quarterfinals of the Champions League and he loses. But quarterfinals of the Champions League, losing to Bayern Munich, that Bayern Munich that was coached by Pep Guardiola back then. So it was a huge achievement. Not to mention that it was a 3-2 uh, aggregate score. So they lost 1-0 in Munich and they drew 2-2 when they were in Lisbon. So uh, it, 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 when they were playing at home ground of Benfica. So it does tell you that he was able to kind of stop Pep from just dominating him. And then after that, they won the League Cup as well. So that means in that, in that season alone, he won two cups. He won the League Cup. He also won the league title which is a very huge achievement. I know, don't say you're a Spenfica, they still needed to be coach, And also, they fired the previous coach. So that had to count for something. 2016-2017 season, he wins a treble with Benfica, starting with winning that Super Cup, which he had lost against Benfica when he was coaching the other team, which is, what's the name of the team that I was talking about earlier? A Vitora Tikumaresh. So after that, then he lost against Sporting, with Benfica, and then now he's winning the Super Cup with Benfica, so finally he wins it. So, he wins the Super Cup, and then he just continues to win the league, and then he wins their version of what we call in South Africa the... But it, it's it's a league cup. It's the Nedbank Cup still, so they he won their league cup as well, so he won a treble in that season, and that was the second time in the history of Benfica that they did that, so that was a big deal. And he continued coaching them, 2016-2017 season. And then the 2018-2019 season, he wins the Super Cup. But the problem that he did is, oh yeah, he wins the Super Cup in the 17-18 season and he finished second. Now he's not winning the league and that's starting to make people go, you're with Benfica, why are you losing? And the final nail on the coffin was the fact that in the first uh, match in the 18-19 season, he lost to one of the teams that they never lost to, like one of the bad, like the worst teams in the league. Then you like, huh? It's equivalent to Chiefs losing to a Bowman Ford. <laughs> yes. It's still painful. Anyways, they, he lost and then he got sacked. And then within a week, he goes to Al Nazar. And Al Nazar back then, which was, what, what, what was this? Hey, hey, full of, full of, full of, full. Um, yeah, I also lost to Basel in that same season. So he goes to Al Nazar within a week. Al Nazar, now Ronaldo plays for them and they're popular, but back then they were not like a uh, big Ronaldo has shown a high spotlight on them and now they are a bigger deal. So he goes to Al Nazar 2018 19 in his first season, they become champions. He did find them second on the lock, but still, he also did something that he did in Europe, which is taking the team deeper into the Continental uh, Cup, which in this case is the Asian Champions League. He would go, went and was knocked out in the semi-finals there. 
And as I said again, Al Naza at the time were not in the size of we can reach the Asian Champions League semi finals. So it was a big deal at the time. And like now, well, they still did lose, I think, a few weeks ago, a few months ago in the Asian Champions League. But that's not the point that we are making right now. The point we are making right now is that he had a decent season with Al Naza as well. Until the following season, which was the 2019 2020 season where he got sacked and was 15th on the lock. Horrible. He got sacked. 2020-2021 season, he goes to join Spartak Moscow in Russia. If you don't know where Moscow is, <laughs> I know you're smart enough. You know where Moscow is. So he goes to Russia. Uh, funny enough, the wife of the co-owner, as I read this thing, they said the wife of the, of the co-owner of the team resigned because she was not happy with him being... Uh, with, with him being brought into the club, which was a big deal. Anyways, after that, um, he, he goes on, he plays in the Europa League, right? And in his group with Spartak Moscow, there was one Napoli and there was Leicester City. Leicester City, before they got relegated, or Vardy or Madison, just playing best football of their lives. And he managed to finish on top of both of them, beating in Napoli home and away and being first on that group of the Europa League. And then after that, things just went south, as they usually do. He lost 7-1 to Zenit Petersburg, um, which is also a big team in Russia. And then he also was ninth on the log, so they sacked him. And this was 2020-21. Then 2022, he goes and he coaches the Egyptian national team and he signed a four-year contract. Like, they believed in this man. They really did. And then when they do that, he goes there. They qualify for the AFCON and then they did what they did in the AFCON. We all saw what happened. Ford Retro system, it didn't even look like a Ford Retro system. It just looked bad. Like Egypt was just horrible in that AFCON. They were really, really bad, guys. Like you remember, Woody, they were just bad. I know Salah got injured eventually, but that's the Egyptian team that almost got, that almost lost to Abu Dhabi, almost lost to Mozambique. Egypt. There was just nothing that seemed to be working. And mind you, this man joined the team in 2022, yet in 2024. You couldn't see what was happening. And I know people would say, but Bilo, this is also uh, a coach who joined the team in 2022. And this is not really a team that he's with because it's a, it's a, what's the word? It's a national team. So you don't get as much time with the players. I get that. But I've seen coaches transform teams in a shorter period of time. So what's the excuse here? So that, those are the kind of things that are worrying me, Guti. Coaches were dominant in the early 2010s and then they kind of wash up. I don't want to say wash up or wash out later on in the season or in their careers. They worry me because it seems like they are failing to adapt to modern football. And then now you're seeing from coaching Benfica to being linked with Kaiser Chiefs. Because usually you coach Benfica, the next thing is like you are linked with the team in England. But here yeah, now it seems like it's been going downhill. And funny enough, because he started with Abo Pacos de Ferreira and then rising up to I Victoria de Gumares. He then goes up to Benfica. Abo, his career was going up. And then somehow he just came back down to Abo Al Naz, Abo Spartak. It's weird. And then Egypt. So. I don't know how I feel about him, but he has won things. And that's one of the things that uh, Chiefs fans, we fans want. But the thing is, will he be able to, to handle the project? And the answer is yes and no. Yes, because if you think about it, his average time with the clubs that he has stayed in is like two years and two months. So he stays quite a while and he, if he's given a project. But I don't think case the Chiefs fans want a person who's about to start a new project and dematerializes after two years. They want to see someone who's going to hit the ground running and start doing things. Is that fair? I do not know. I don't think, I don't think the OK's the Chiefs fans have the patience. It might not be a fair thing, but it's just the reality of it. Kaiser the Chiefs fans want a winner at this point. But what do you think about this coach? Let me know down in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Like the video. And go check out my other channel, The Cutback with Umpilo. I'm linking the video somewhere here. So please go watch that video that I made about Mamelodi Sundowns. 
and Stellan Bosch and also the other game I made about Pirates and Chipper United. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, remember, equals Alpilumo.